my name is Chris Hong and I'm an artist and this is my YouTube channel where I make art videos and I'm really excited to share today's video with you guys. I am going to be looking back at some of my art that I've done in 2017 and I'm going to reflect on it, give it a bit of context as to where my life was at the point of making the art and and by the end of the video i'm going to make some new year's resolutions on where i would like to see my art headed for 2018. i thought this video would be a great way to introduce myself to some people that are new to me new to my channel that may be unfamiliar with my work and it's a great topic for a video to kind of end the year off with I can tell this video is going to be a long one, so get yourself a warm drink or something to eat and um, let's get started. So in January, I started the year off by doing some terrible oil paintings. And a lot of you may not know that I've actually done some oil paintings in the past. I had to put oil paintings kind of on the back burner a little bit because I knew I was going to be really busy this year with traveling and moving so i i wanted something a little more portable a little a little easier to just kind of whip out and and paint with earlier in the year i made the switch from oil painting to watercolor and gouache looking at this i i think i could do a much better job at it now because i i did a lot of studying the forms of the face this year and so i i think i can render these forms out so much better now. I mean, this looks like a a droopy sock to me. And we have this one as well. This one I think is much more successful, except these mouse ears, which I couldn't, I just couldn't render out properly. There are parts that I, I do like about it. I think the face turned out pretty well. And we have this one as well. These are mostly just for practice. So they are not perfect, but it is nice to look back on it and see where where you were skill-wise. And I I know that if I painted over them now, I, I could definitely make them at least a little bit better. Now it's February and we have this one, which I I like quite quite a lot. I I have to say, I actually started this in 2016, ended up finishing it up in the new year. I, I'm sad this one's quite small. It's a six by six and it's a, I think it's like masonite board. So moving on to March, we have this painting here. I really like the, this billowing shape of her dress. And I just like the general like movement. There's something about it that looks unfinished to me. I think I need to do something a bit more in the background here. It, it just looks like a black void. So while I was painting that one, I started painting this one. That's another Alice, except this one is more of a portrait. These all need a, like a, a varnish. I haven't varnished these yet. So I think the the darks got a little grayed out. They don't look as vibrant as they did when I initially painted them. So I think once I varnish them, I haven't, I've never tried varnishing. But once I varnish them, I think the darks, dark colors will pop more. So moving on to April now, I have this painting. It's, it's of, um, Ares and Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. I also started this, um, in 2016. I was painting in acrylics at the time and I, I did the underpainting in acrylics and then never touched it again. And then I, I picked it back up in 2017 and finished it up in oils. And apparently you can do that. You can do an underpainting in acrylics and paint over it in oils. I do really like how, how these two came out. Here's a closer look. Here's the last oil painting that I did this year. Usually when I oil paint, I I end up spending hours and hours just laboring over it. But this one came together quite quite painlessly, except the flowers. The flowers, <laughs> I don't know how to paint flowers, so the flowers were challenging and they still don't look great, but 
I think overall, this is a, a nice oil painting considering I've only done a couple up until now. So we're still in April and I realized that the rest of my year was gonna be filled with all kinds of traveling and moving. So I knew that I, I couldn't lug around my painting equipment everywhere with me. And so I had to kind of switch things up and this is when I started painting in watercolor and gouache. I started out with this painting. It made me feel a lot less anxious about painting on expensive paper like this. I had these water, Arsh's watercolor blocks that I bought, but I was I had so much anxiety around using them. And this is the painting that finally broke that anxiety and um, gave me the permission to go ahead and paint more. And quickly after that one, I did this one. It's another Alice. Alice is a character that I tend to fall back to when I don't know what I'm doing. So this one, I I was really happy when I finished this one because I had done it quite quickly. It's, it's simple, but I, I like the design of it. Next we have a little red riding hood and a big bad wolf. A little red riding hood is also another character that I like to fall back to when I don't have an idea what to draw and I quite like how this one turned out as well. Still in April, we have this Dorothy painting here that I I like very much and this is I think one of my favorite paintings that I've ever done. And as you can tell, I was quite productive in April. I was basically doing one of these a week as well as finishing up with some of the oil paintings. And honestly, that was one of the happiest times of my life. That sounds a little dramatic, but I was really, I was in a really, really good place. I, I really enjoyed being so busy with painting and being, being productive. I, I just love the feeling of being productive. And I felt like every time I finished one, I, I was just so excited to do the next one. I would finish one painting and then I'd be ready to go on the next one. And, and I, I wish I could go back to that. Yeah, I think, I really think this is one of my better pieces that I've done so far. So moving on to May now, we have this painting here, which is a gouache painting. When I finished it, I wasn't sure about it, but as time went on, I ended up liking it more and more. I like the simplicity of it and I like the shapes and I, I think this character turned out really cute. So there's that. So we have a Rapunzel here. Around this time, it was spring and flowers were blooming and I think I was just inspired by, by it. Her face got, is a little dark and so I, when I made prints of this, I, I lightened this area up a bit um, digitally. I think I could do it traditionally. I, I could go back in and lighten it up, but uh, I, I'm done with it mentally. Next, we have this painting, which I titled Breathe. It's in watercolor. I really like the shape of the skirt. That seems to be a common theme in my paintings. And I like this vignetting that I did. I think it looks kind of neat. Next, we have a mermaid piece here in honor of Mermaid. This was one of the more complex watercolor pieces that I've done up until this point. Um, it has like a full, full background. It has several different characters. It took a lot, a lot of water and a lot of layers to get, to get this area as dark, dark enough to make it look like it's underwater. So I, I was really scared that I would ruin the, the surface of the paper and thankfully that didn't happen. And this is why when you can, if you can afford it, use good expensive paper like Arches. When you don't and you use cheaper paper, the surface of the paper will end up, um, what's the word, plying? And you really don't want that, it will, it will ruin the painting, so. When you can and you can afford it, I would highly suggest that you buy good, expensive, 100% cotton, acid-free watercolor paper, at least, at least 140 pounds thick. This is 140 pounds. So I really, I really do like this one a lot. And this is, this is my most, I have a print of this on my shop and this is 
the bestseller. So this is the, the last painting I did for a while. I actually, I didn't paint again until, until August because I, this was when I was getting really busy and traveling a lot. We had an out of town wedding to go to. I visited my family because my grandmother from Korea was visiting. When, I, when I'm busy like that, I don't tend to paint. I, I need big blocks of undisturbed time if I want to paint. I, I can't paint knowing that in two hours, three hours, even four hours that I'm gonna have to go out somewhere or be somewhere else or do some other task. I, I need big chunks of time without anything else looming over when I want to paint. So sadly, this is the last painting I did in early June and no paintings in July. And then in August, I did this one. And this is also a gouache painting. I really like how I rendered this one. I think the rendering, rendering here, it just looks very polished. So I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. So moving on to September, I have this painting here. It's in gouache. I think I was feeling a little kind of down at the time. So I wanted to, have something kind of melancholic looking. I'm not sure if that comes through, but I, I do like I do like how I abstracted the skirt a lot here. Next we have this painting here, which was clearly inspired by fall and the changing leaves. And I was particularly inspired by the pumpkin spice trend that started popping up everywhere. Yeah, I like I like the the vignetting. And this is done in watercolor. Towards the end of September, I did this painting here. It's more of a simple one. I wanted one with no background. So it would have like a, a very graphic silhouette. Um, I, I really struggled painting these flowers. I really need to study how to paint flowers. <laughs> they're, not, they're not very easy to paint. They're supposed to be peonies. I like this one. So on to October now, we have this piece, which is a watercolor for the most part. I, I did end up going over parts with gouache because I felt I had gone a bit too dark in certain areas with the watercolor. I really don't like to do that, but you know, better that than just saying I give up on this painting and just chucking it away, right? And it's this kind of red haired, character with glasses again with kitties. She's got two this time. So now we have this painting, which I think you guys may recognize because this is when I started my YouTube channel. Yeah, and it's the same red haired character with glasses with a little cat and she she's supposed to look like me. This one especially looks a lot like me, I think. Yeah, I really like this one. So moving on to November now, we have this painting here that you guys also may recognize. This is actually the last painting I have to show you guys today because this is the only, you know, big illustration type of painting that I've done. As you guys may know, I was, I had surgery towards the end of November and I was recovering for the most part of December. And also it overlapped with the holidays. I think mostly I was just busy with the YouTube channel and figuring that out. So if I want to put out a video a week, it's, it's really tough to juggle the making of the video and the making of the painting. And also I, I've explained in my previous videos, I was, I'm feeling a little, a little unsure of my art lately. I am feeling like I want to go into a different direction, try some new things, maybe pick up oils again. So that's also why I haven't committed to an illustration like this in the past month or so. So I have made prints of most of these paintings I've done this year. And at the time that you're seeing this video, I actually have a Boxing Week promotion going on. Prints are a great way to not only decorate your walls with, but it helps support me and support this channel. I will have all the information and links down below. So what are my goals for 2018? For one, I know I want to do more oil paintings. Number two, I want to get better at doing backgrounds. I want to get 
better at doing more complex scenes. I think if I want to get better at doing backgrounds, I definitely have to do some environmental studies, which I definitely don't do enough of. So I, I should do more of that. So all in all, looking back at my art throughout this year, I think I'm, I'm really proud of myself, even though I had a few periods of downtime where I didn't produce anything. I was still the most productive I've ever been, especially I think from April to early June, I was I was really on a roll and I I really want to get back into that zone again. I that was the best time. That was I was really happy during that time. Pablo Picasso said that inspiration finds you working and I think that's so true. When you're working on a piece, that's when you feel inspired to do the next piece. At least that's the case with me anyway. And you have to jump on that and take advantage of that that feeling of inspiration right away otherwise you can end up losing that momentum and that's what happened to me in the the second half of the year i had a period of time where i was really busy not doing any artwork and then trying to get back into it again was difficult and it was kind of hard to find that momentum again so for 2018 um i i don't want to say that i want to be more productive and and produce more paintings in 2018 because i think i was i was quite productive in 2017 at least for me anyway and i i think what i would be happy with is if i if i did the same amount or less paintings but that but they were better paintings if they were more complex and uh, a little more fully thought out. I think I would be really happy with that. So that is it for this week's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching my art progression through 2017. And thanks to this YouTube channel, you'll be able to follow along in 2018. So that's really exciting. I hope this inspired you in any way. I just can't wait to show you what I have next in store. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!